Welcome back to Sound Advice, marketing and PR tips for musicians with me, Arielle Hyatt from Ariel Publicity and my dear friend, Derek Sivers of CD Baby. We've been chatting about a lot of different topics here with the camera on and the camera off and we are now a fully digital PR firm. And so what's critical for the success of the musicians that we represent is niche marketing. And the thing that's amazing about the internet, I think, is that I like to say there's a butt for every seat. There is now, I think on record, 100 million blogs. And there really is uh, the most specific topic you could get down to, you'll find a community based around it. And I think niche marketing is more important than it's ever been. And I know you do too. Yeah, I, I started noticing that um, that the best-selling albums on CD Baby were the ones that were sharply defined um, as kind of like that, that went for something specific. So I kind of, I was trying to explain this to people and I thought of a good metaphor to explain it. Like, think of the typical archery range, right? Where you have like a bullseye on the other side of a grassy field and you've got your arrow and you're trying to hit it. That for decades, you know, whatever, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, um, that bullseye was like one inch and it was 100 whatever yards away. And it was just this thing that if you try your shoot, shoot your arrows at it and your arrows would pretty much always miss unless by chance you hit it dead in the center and you wrote something that the mass public wanted to hear and then you'd be a massive bullseye hit. So, and then if you weren't a massive hit, you were nothing. So what's interesting is that in just the last 10 years, things have completely changed. So now we've got this, the, the internet's made it a, a world of millions of niches. So now it's like that target on the other side of the archer range is actually like 100 feet across. And it's, it's massive, and there are plenty of places you can hit. You can just shoot your arrows and just have fun. But the trick is, is that it's like somebody sneaky went and kind of like cut, took a little saw and cut out the middle of the target so there is no middle. So if you're trying to aim dead mainstream now and you're trying to write a mainstream hit for the average person in the world about average things, you're, if that's where you're aiming, you're gonna hit nothing. And if you just aim anywhere near the side <laughs> and you do anything weird, you're going to get the public's attention more. So I've got a, uh, a good specific example of this. Um, Regina Spector is this artist that had, uh, she had three albums on CD Baby where she was doing pretty normal stuff. I mean, it was more like kind of a, a well-paved path. It was kind of like Tori Amos, kind of arpeggiated chick with a warbling voice and piano, kind of doing these wispy songs and lots of arpeggios on the piano. And then she did three albums that did pretty well. And um, then it's like, around her fourth album, like something in her brain just kind of, you got the feeling she just said, oh, fuck it, and just started getting weirder. So all of a sudden, like the opening song is called Ode to Divorce, and it's about, like, I'm in your tonsils looking at your molars, and I like your breath with a minty kiss and something. And then the second song is called Poor Little Rich Boy, and then she, she takes a drumstick and like hits her piano chair, her bench, while she's playing with her left hand, and her right hand is like down there whacking her chair with a stick. And it's like the weirder she got, people's heads started turning, and they're just like, what was that? And, and I actually like that Eminem, of all people, said that that's his goal when he's writing his lyrics. Is he, he said, I wanna write something so out there that when people are talking over it at a club or a restaurant, and it comes on, that they'll stop talking and go, did he just say what I think <laughs> he just said? Right. And it's like, that's kinda what you wanna do musically. You've gotta do something that cuts, that just, um, it's like I kinda think about it like the, the world has this kind of like big foggy cloud uh, of attention. It's almost like a big, you know, hunk of cheese that's the world's attention. And if, if you're well-rounded, like if you say like, hey, I'm all things to all people, and my name is Mark Smith, and I made a record about me, and it's about my life, and I think it'll apply to all of your lives, then it's like, you know what, dude, nobody's gonna pay attention to this well-rounded record. But if you get sharply defined, if you think of, that the way to cut through something is to be sharp as a knife. If you sharply define what you're doing and you say, uh, you know what, this is an album about sailing. <laughs> this is an album only for sailors. If you're not a sailor, you won't like it. Uh, so get, get out of my way, 99.99% .99 of the world, <laughs> because this 0.1% is gonna dig it. I guess that would be 0.01%, wouldn't it? Uh, so if you do that, then all of a sudden, you know, you've found this niche and you can get the attention of people in that niche and be sharply defined, exclude the rest, 
and it's kind of like, yeah, now you can get somewhere because you've sharply defined yourself. What I think is interesting is that you look at some long careers, like uh, the, the first ones that come to mind are uh, Paul Simon, David Bowie, uh, Madonna, and Elvis Costello are four artists off the top of my head that, um, that they use the album as their niche, that they have a well-rounded career. But you know, you look at David Bowie as almost the most obvious example that he's like, you know, now my name is Ziggy Stardust and I'm from Mars. <laughs> now I'm the thin white duke. Now I'm the androgynous diamond dogs. Now I'm kind of like 80s suited blonde man. Now I'm post-punk Nine Inch Nails. It's like he used his albums as a niche. Or you think of like Paul Simon doing like, now I'm making a gospel record. Now I'm making a South African record. Now I'm making a Brazilian record. Uh, and his last record is like this kind of like techno thing with Brian Eno. And, um, I think that's a great way, like, if you're feeling like, wait, but I have more to offer. I don't want to just be a tiny niche to the world. It's like, okay, we'll just make this album a niche. Like, put together a collection of songs that are very niched and market it in a very niched way. So there you go. There is no bullseye on the target, and niche marketing is going to be key to navigating the new music business. This has been Arielle Hyatt with Sound Advice. Tips, marketing, and PR to help you.